In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use Generator Fill in Photoshop to create ideas in order to take your environments into. A lot of times you may get stuck on a photo reference that you don't want to replicate to exactly what you see. And with Generator Fill, you can expand your canvas and generate additional ideas outside of it that you may not have thought of, letting it fill in the gaps and guide you in the visual direction. You can also generate specific elements such as props or environmental assets into an image itself to give you more ideas of what you can include as a prop or as a visual style to expand on. And this doesn't have to be just photos. You could do this to work in progress of environments you have not completed and you are just stuck and don't know which direction to take them into. Or even finished projects that you want to maybe expand on and see where you may want to take the finished projects into and expand on them. It's a great tool and it'll give you a ton of ideas to begin to implement into your own work, into your game environments and level designs. So let's get into it. The first step of using Generator Fill is expanding the environment. Simply taking an image and then letting Generator Fill expand the boundaries of that image. So I'm gonna bring in a photo that I took and open it up in Photoshop. So let's say you have an idea of something you want to create, something like this, but you want to see what the boundaries, what the bigger environment could be, and you are just stuck generating those ideas. So just expand the image and let generate the fill, create the ideas for you. The way you do this is you go to image, canvas size, and make the canvas bigger than it is. So I'm going to go with, let's double it to 8,000, and let's do a uh, height, let's do also double. 6,000 and let me go ahead and zoom out. So here's what I have. Next step is to take a marquee tool, your rectangular marquee tool and make a selection within the image, leaving just a few pixels for the border. So you are basically selecting your image, but you're leaving a little bit outside, just a few pixels. That's enough. Next, we need to invert that selection. So that way, not the image itself is selected, but everything outside of it. To invert your selection, you can go to select and inverse. Control Shift I is the shortcut key. And also, if you have this generator fill tab floating when the menu open, there's an icon here to invert selection. Once you've inverted your selection, all you need to do is click generate the fill and then generate the result. We're not going to type anything into this text just yet. We'll just simply let generate the fill create the outside of this image for us using the information within the image itself. So let's go ahead and generate. This will take a little bit of time and then you'll have three options to cycle through. And here it is. So essentially what it did, it took the information within the image and expanded what could be outside of it. And in the properties, we have two other options. Here's the second one and here's the third one. All are pretty decent results. If you don't like what it generated and you want to see more options, more variations within the properties options here, just click generate again and you'll get three other additional options. And here we have three more. Now, as you continue to generate, you can add more variations. However, I recommend that you delete the ones you do not like or don't want to use. Otherwise it could slow down Photoshop and you work in, in it. So you just click on the trash can right here and remove the variations you do not want. You're not limited to just photos. You can also do this with your work in progress as well as with completed screenshot images you've taken. So here is a work in progress of a globe staircase I did and I'm gonna use the same technique to see what else I could create. Maybe I wanted to expand this environment to something more but I'm stuck. So apply the same step-by-step -step process. Open up the image, the screenshot of work in progress. Go to image, canvas size and expand the canvas. So get a larger number so you have some information it could fill. So let's do for width 4,000, for height let's do 3,000, actually let's do a little higher, let's do 5,000. Let's zoom out and again I'm going to make a selection and leave a little bit on the outside. I'm going to press Control shift i to invert my selection and then click generate the fill and generate. Again I did not type in anything into that text box and I'm going to let the information within the image and just expand the canvas outside of it. And here's some ideas. That's not bad. Here's a second one. And here's a third one. That's pretty interesting. Just kind of 
opens up more of uh, what the environment could be. If you don't like any of those variations, generate again. And here are three more variations. And you can even do this with either finished environments or semi finished environments to see how else you could expand on your current idea. So here I have an image that's not completed environment, but it's more developed. So I want to see what else I could do with this. Uh, let me go ahead and use the exact same thing. I'm going to go to image and expand my canvas to let's say width 3500 and height to 3000. Actually, let's do 4500. And then in this case, I'm going to make a marquee selection but a little bit more closer to uh, to the building itself. So it's going to remove everything outside of it. After you make a selection, we have to invert. Remember, you have to invert. So that way it samples everything that's inside this marquee selection, and it's going to fill the outside of it with some information. And let's go ahead and hit generate to fill and generate. And here we have three options. This is not very good. Let's try a second one. Much better, a little bit more interesting. And here's the third one. And you can see how close it is that uh, it mimics the theme, the colors, and it makes everything fit into the environment. Not every time, this first one was not very good, but the third one does a pretty good job. Again, it's not going to give you detail to use as exact photo reference, but it's going to give you ideas of what you could take your current location, your focal point, and expand on it to the outside for a larger environment. And again, you don't like any of these options, generate again, generate again and just keep the ones that you want to narrow down your ideas. So let's say you are using the generator fill and letting it generate the outside canvas for you and the visuals for you, but there's just not enough visual information. It's basically taking the info from inside the image and expanding it and adding it to the outside. But let's say you want to have additional new themes being added to create ideas for you. In this case, you need to define a text screen, a filter, so it can generate based on those terms. So here I already expanded the image on this photo. I'm going to make my selection again, again, leaving a little bit on the outside. And then I need to invert my selection, control shift I. And in this case, I'm going to click generate to fill, but I'm not going to just simply generate. I'm going to type something in here into the text. So that way it looks for something specific that I type in. So in my case, let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to type in train and generate. And here's our first idea. Not very good. Here's our second one, a little bit more interesting. And here's a third one. This one is not bad. I can generate another three uh, variations. Let's go ahead and uh, see what they are about. So essentially it's, it's using the same prompt train to generate three more variations. Here's the first one, second one, third one. If this prompt, this text is not quite giving you the uh, ideas that you would want, type in a new one. Let's do train station and let's generate. So here I am uh, expanding on existing variations by typing in a new text in the properties menu. And here's first one, here's the second one, and here's the third one. And you can uh, just change this prompt, this text to anything else to generate additional ideas based on that selection that you already pre-made before by keeping everything inside this properties menu. And uh, again, remember, uh, delete the ones you do not want to use or have no interest in. So that way it's a little bit faster uh, to navigate inside Photoshop because otherwise you're going to have a lot of these that could be slowing Photoshop down. Let's try something similar by typing in a prompt, but on a finished screenshot that I did of the retro office project. So uh, here I have a hallway with uh, an interior office and I want to maybe expand beyond this specific screenshot and the small area I created to give me more ideas of what I could create with this because I like the environment, but I'm kind of stuck on ideas and I want to expand beyond it. So let's go ahead and expand this and uh, type in a prompt to help us. So I'm going to go to image. Let's do kind of a size. Again, I'm going to expand it. Let's go to 4,000 by 3,000. I'm going to make a selection right in the run here. Control shift I to invert selection, generate the fill. And here I'm going to type in a text. So let's do, uh, let's type in hospital and generate. And here's the first one. Not bad. Here's the second one. It's pretty good. And here's the third one. Much better. That's uh, far more interesting. And again, I'm not going to continue generating ideas, but you just click generate on the same term or vary the term into something else, add another word and generate again to give you more specific variations. Tip number two is adding environmental elements and props. 
So this step allows you to make a small selection around an existing part of an image and then simply type in a prompt text to generate something within that selection. So here I have the photo open. I already expanded the canvas so we have a lot more to work with. And this can be a photo that is untouched or something you expanded the canvas on previously. So at this point, let's say I want to add additional elements into this image and begin to generate more ideas than what I see here. Because right now this is just a reference photo that's been expanded, but there's no new ideas in it. So to use this, you simply use any of the marquee tool selections. Could be a rectangular, could be elliptical, or you could even use a lasso tool or polygonal tool. So I'll use the lasso tool in this example. And I'm just going to make a selection around a certain area, let's say right here on the ground. And once you have a selection, go to generate the fill and type in what you would want to see in this place. What kind of visual information do you want to fill it with? So let's go ahead and uh, let's do swamp and click enter. And here what we have. It even created reflections from the image itself, which is pretty cool. So here's variation number two, which is actually much better. And here's number three even better. And I can go ahead and continue to generate ideas by typing in a new word, maybe new variations of the same word, or I can even make a new selection. So let's say maybe right here, I'll make a another selection, the size of the selection you make matters. So know ahead of time what you want to place there. So it's to proper scale. And let's go ahead and do generate the fill. And I'll type in old abandoned truck. And here we go. It's actually not bad it fits pretty well. Again, this is just an idea. This is not something that I would uh, use to model from, but it gives me visual information for me to start thinking that this is a pretty cool prop to possible place in this environment. Let's take a look at the second variation. That's, that's pretty good too. And here's the third one. And you can see these match your lighting and perspective. And you can just keep doing this to the image, filling it with new information and generating new ideas. Now, if you make a selection, so let's say I'm going to make a selection around this house right here. So I'm going to make a selection house itself and you don't type anything in, it will remove that element. So if you don't want to remove whatever you made a selection of, make sure you type in a prompt text. And as an important note, in this example, I am not inverting my selection. I'm just making a selection where I want to have a new visual element, type in the text and generate it. And this option is a great way to expand on a work in progress environment that you haven't completed. So here I have an abandoned house that I worked on in source and I don't have an external environment to it, just the focal point itself, the house. And I want to run through multiple ideas of what I may want to expand on for a large environment, for perhaps maybe a full playable level. So in this case, because it's a, such a close up shot, I would probably go and expand my canvas first. And let's do width to 3000, height, let's do 1500, just slightly bigger. I'm a, I would make a selection just around the house itself. Control Shift I. Let's uh, use generator fill. And in this case, I'm going to go ahead and type in something. So it generates the outside area, not with the same information on the inside, but with this extra info. So in this case, I will type in, uh, let's say, woods. And let's see what it does. So here's variation number one. Not very good. Eh, it's okay. Again, idea. Not bad. And here's the third one. If I don't like any of these, I would generate again. Let's just stick with this one. And then I would come in a little closer and start making smaller selections using the lasso tool. So right here, maybe I would want some, uh, I don't know, maybe some kind of furniture. Actually, let's uh, make a larger selection and let's see if we can maybe generate a old couch. Not very good. Here's a second one, third one. Again, I would continue uh, generating different prompts, uh, making new selections. Maybe right here I would want to have trash. Here's a second variation. Here's a third, much better. And I would just begin to build up on different ideas within the image using this trick, using this second option of adding environmental elements and props within the image itself. And here I wanted to show you the before and after, after spending a bit more time and being a little bit more deliberate with the results. So here's the original screenshot and here's after spending a bit of time making specific selections and just tweaking a little bit more and choosing the results a lot more carefully. So it gave me a lot more interesting visuals of uh, an entire environment beyond whatever I initially created into possibly including this abandoned house in some kind of a wood forest that's been abandoned and maybe a location for a possible level. 
for this third option is it will allow you to create and generate full backdrops and place any element within your image within your photo or your work in progress or your final screenshot into a new environment this works best when you have an element that you want to keep and you can easily make a selection and isolate so in this case right here this photo if i want to keep this building it would uh, be a little bit more difficult to keep because there is a lot of foliage that i would need to remove now i could make a quick selection of the house so i can remove everything else uh, outside of it but i would just choose maybe a different image that has a more clear separation of that element that I want to keep. So in this case, I'm not going to use this. I'm going to use one of the works in progress. So here I had an idea of floating cubes and I did a quick mock-up in UE5. But outside of this, I really had no idea where to take this. So with generator fill, I can run through multiple ideas very quickly and pinpoint me in a visual direction that I want to take this project into. In this tip, you need to make a selection around elements you want to keep. So to make better selections, you would need to use lasso tool, polygonal lasso tool, or the magnetic lasso tool. These are the best ways to make very accurate selections. In this case, a polygonal lasso tool would work better. I would just zoom in and make a selection by left clicking once and isolate the element that I want to keep. So I'm gonna quickly pause and just kind of jump forward to the final selection and yeah, but i'm not going to be very precise with this i just want i want to show you very quickly how you can generate full environments based on the selection that you have here i have made a selection around the three cubes and the mannequin this is what i want to keep then you need to invert the selection so that way you can generate outside of that selection of whatever you type in into the prompt so i'm going to press Control shift i to invert the selection and now just type in whatever you want so let's type in generate a fill and let's say for the first uh, idea, let's do beach and type in generate. Here's the first idea. Okay, not bad. Interesting. Let's do another idea. Let's do sunny, sandy beach. Generate again. It's going to use the same selection as long as I type in into the prompt right here on the properties panel. And it's going to run through and give me another three options. Here we go. This is much more interesting. Here's the second option. And here's the third one. Maybe I want to try a whole new environment. Let's do uh, mountain top cliffs. And here are three ideas. Again, enough to start making your mind think that this might be an interesting location to place this in. And you can just continue generating different prompts based on the selection that you made. And it'll give you a full environment for the background. And again, this works the best when you can actually isolate the subject from the background the best. So anything that's against a solid background, so you can make that easy selection. Then you invert that selection, run generator fill, type in the prompt. Let's try something wild. Let's do city and generate. And here are three options. So using these three tips, you can run through a variety of ideas for any of your images that you've taken, photographs that you've gotten, as well as any work in progress, projects that you're working on and just can't figure out the next step, or running different variations on your completed work that you could expand on. In this tutorial, I showed you how to generate more ideas using the generator fill. But then you need to take your ideas and expand them further into projects, into level designs and environments that you complete. And to help you to complete projects that you start, take a look at a book, Pre-Production Blueprint, I released on how to plan game environments and level designs. And this is a complete system for planning your environments and level designs so you finish the projects that you start. And it'll guide you through everything you need to plan out so you can successfully finish your environments. The book is available as a paperback, as a PDF, or as a Kindle. And you can pick it up right now.